Gene expression is something different than people usually think of when they, when they think of, of genetics and genomics. So uh, normally you actually have uh, DNA is the, the backbone for everything, all the proteins that are made in your body. But that DNA must be transcribed or converted to RNA first. It's the RNA that actually then directly makes the proteins in, in the cells uh, later on. The amount of RNA in the, uh, that's actually being made is the gene expression that we actually look at. So uh, normally the DNA is fixed and it doesn't change during your life. The RNA though can change massively. It can change uh, as much as, as uh, a thousand fold. The, the RNA levels can change. So the amount of protein you make from an individual gene that's part of your DNA, uh, the amount you make can vary widely uh, depending on a lot of different factors. In some genes, for example, that the gene expression can change because it's warm outside. Or in another gene, it can change because you ate something, a heavy meal. So in some genes, really don't change much at all. So for our experiments, we looked at gene expression, which is a snapshot of exactly what, how much protein of certain types you're making at that time. The question of exactly what a gene is is actually uh, becoming much more complicated these days. <laughs> so we used to think that it was the DNA that speci made specific proteins uh, that caused a spe specific phenotype. In other words, something we could see, uh, for example, that your skin was white or black, uh, that that was the definition of a gene. However, we now know that there are many uh, things that are, that are proteins that are actually just there to control the amount of the gene expression that a, a gene has. And even worse than that, some of these don't need to be proteins at all. Some of them can actually be just RNA. So the exact definition of a gene to me and to many people is actually becoming a question uh, that is, is not as set in stone as we used to believe. The reason we got into this area of research, into ME-CFS, is because we really wanted to understand more about fatigue. In order to understand, what we had happened was that about, oh, about eight years ago, uh, we discovered how to actually look at fatigue. We had, for 30 years, I wanted to study this, but couldn't because we didn't know how to actually activate this, the, uh, the neurons that would transmit the signal for fatigue. What happened then was we, that we discovered exactly what genes were important for creating the receptors that detect the signals for fatigue and send that signal to the brain. So for that reason, we suddenly were able to now look at fatigue in a very different way. We could actually look at the genes that, that genuinely were involved in fatigue. This led us in, in uh, several years later to actually look at ME chronic fatigue syndrome because we thought that maybe we could use that as clues to exactly how in human beings the, the fatigue system worked. And we knew there was something uh, misaligned in it, was something was wrong in that, but we didn't know what it was. So the genes that we first looked at in ME chronic fatigue syndrome were the genes that we had learned from mouse studies actually, that uh, were intimately involved in actually detecting fatigue and signaling the brain that fatigue was occurring. So those genes include, and, and I can show you now in some, some slides here, uh, that some of the genes that, that we included are things called ASICs, for example. These are acid-sensing ion channels. So we knew that, that uh, uh, acid was important in, in terms of actually uh, causing the muscle to uh, signal the neurons in the muscle, send a signal to the brain that you actually are uh, working, that your muscles are working. Other genes uh, included the adrenergic receptors. The adrenergic receptors are really important in terms of controlling the amount of blood flow. And since in your muscle, when you exercise it, you actually are building up a series of metabolites, increasing blood flow washes those metabolites out. Metabolites are normally signaling fatigue. The 
uh, activation of the adrenergic receptors actually causes it to be washed out in normal people. In MECFS, we find that doesn't happen, but that's, a, that, that's another question. So the other genes we looked at, because in humans, we, we found that we couldn't really look directly at the neurons because nobody likes to have their neurons taken away uh, because they don't grow back. Uh, we decided to look at the immune system. The immune system, we know, is aware of the amount of fatigue you have, so we figured that the same receptors might be on those as well, and they were. So since we were looking at immune cells, we, we wanted to know what the immune cells were also during, doing in chronic fatigue ME patients. Now, this had already been looked at previously, too, so we, we already had an inkling that some of these genes, some of the immune genes, should be involved in uh, ME chronic fatigue syndrome because there was a, uh, been a number of studies that had shown uh, that they were altered, at least in some uh, of the studies that were done. We had, uh, initially, we had looked at whether uh, ME CFS might be a hereditary condition. We were very fortunate here at the University of Utah because we have a thing called the Utah Population Database, which allows us to look at a number of families uh, and try to determine when a, a condition is uh, hereditary or not. So we involved uh, a, the, one of the, the researchers actually dis, di, di, discovered the breast cancer gene, Lisa Cannon Albright, in this, and her husband, Derek uh, Albright. Uh, so we looked at uh, chronic fatigue patients and tried to determine whether there were families that had an overabundance in a way that indicated there was a genetic heredi an inherited component to chronic fatigue syndrome. And we did indeed find that there are, um, in the Utah population uh, database, we found at least three families in which there was a increase that indicated that at least some cases of, and probably a minority of cases of uh, chronic fatigue syndrome are actually inherited quite directly. Uh, so uh, we believe firmly that there is a uh, hereditary, least predisposition or risk factor uh, that is inherited. There is a question of whether we've even begun to determine the, uh, the genes that are really involved in, in chronic fatigue uh, uh, in the, uh, so far, we picked genes that we knew were quite specifically related to uh, the symptoms of chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia as well, uh, and ME. The, we picked those genes because they were, they, were, they were easy targets and we knew about them. We also, though, wanted to look at genes that were uh, involved not just with the symptoms, but also the uh, emergence and cause of chronic fatigue and ME. So we've actually recently uh, completed a study where we've looked at 46 genes, some of which we think are causative for the, the, this syndrome, but there are many more that we wanted to look at. And we are currently uh, doing experiments looking at uh, uh, basically all of the genes that are expressed uh, in the immune cells as well as other tissues to try to determine whether there are other genes that specifically could cause uh, uh, ME-CFS or at least even some of the other symptoms or the other comorbidities that we see with these conditions. So those studies are still ongoing, so there is much to learn still. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube, tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging of mail naar wvp het me-cvsvereniging.nl Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chatsessies.